Hello and welcome to News Click. We have with us today senior journalist and old friend of News Click, Seema Mustafa. Welcome, Seema. Uh, our topic today is the recent elections to state assemblies in five states. And I'll start by asking Seema, what do you think has been the overall impact of these elections? Well, you know, before the elections, let's go back one step back and see that before the elections, what were we expecting? We were expecting the Congress to win in Punjab, to form the government in Uttarakhand, to get Goa back, and then to form the government in um, UP, which everybody was predicting would have a hung assembly, and when uh, and probably the Samajwadi Congress factor. So you had the Congress everywhere. And then after the vote, you don't have the Congress anywhere. That shows how badly the Congress estimated itself, its own prospects, which and the media overestimated the Congress. But more important and more dangerous is the fact or rather the inability of the Congress to understand where it is now on the ground in even simpler states like um, Punjab or uh, even Goa. So we are in a position where the electorate all across has given an absolute kick in the face to the UPA uh, ruling party, which is, I mean, the main party, which is the Congress, and has also told the BJP that it doesn't repose faith in the BJP because the BJP has fared very badly in uh, UP, and uh, it was hoping to do a little better than it has in Punjab. But it has actually lost seats in, in Punjab. In fact, it has lost seats in uh, Punjab. And it has lost seats or it's lost uh, vote percentages in UP. So it's not in a very healthy p position. So the two so-called nationalist parties are really been shown the door. Let's look at these states one by one. And let's look at UP uh, first. Did you think that uh, the election results in UP were along expected lines or were you surprised? Uh, I hate to say it, but I wasn't surprised because I had written this, uh, Raghu. I had said that uh, the Congress will not cost thir uh, cross 35 seats and that, the uh, and that the Samajwadi will get anything 180 plus. And 180, if you cross, then it can become 200, 210. Sure. We all know that. Sure. Uh, this was because, you know, after touring uh, UP, which is a state which one does know having also contested. Uh, I didn't see the Congress uh, vote on the ground and I didn't see the BJP vote on the ground. In fact, the BJP barely existed. And the Congress people were talking about a little bit because of Rahul Gandhi's high voltage campaign. But at the same time, they were tempering that answer by saying that they're not going to vote for the Congress because where is the Congress? Right. Or the anger that they have with the Congress. So there was no vote for the party. And the other thing that was very um, uh, visible was that the vote, which was the Muslim and the Brahmin vote that had added itself on the Dalit vote for uh, BSP. Uh, the BSP, was running away from the BSP. Let me ask another uh, sort of related question. Till Mayavati's election last time, UP had shown this uh, split vote with all the parties getting in the low hundreds, nobody able to independently form government on its own. Mayavati's election broke that pattern, gave her a decisive uh, mandate. And correspondingly, this time, when the electorate wanted to throw her out, the electorate obviously chose to give Mulayam Singh uh, an equally large mandate. Given this phenomenon of large single party mandates in UP, is that not also contributing to the fact that the other bit players Congress, the BJP are not likely to get the kind of 80s and 90s that people were used to earlier. Yes, absolutely. That's absolutely that. Uh, because somewhere the electorate has made up its mind that for the moment they're going to keep with the regional parties. And I think while the Muslims and the Brahmins were angry that the BSP didn't do anything for them, they were also aware for the, about the fact that the BSP did quite a bit for its own vote bank, right. which is the Jatavs and the Dalits. And there is very visibly in UP a sense of empowerment. Because, you know, if you go into the backwaters of Bhagpat, where the 
Dalits couldn't even vote before. I was really surprised that in the in the market square, literally, a whole bunch came up while we were talking to the jats to say, no, no, she's done so much for us. Now, this was an assertion you could have never heard right. from the Jatav community a while back. So, I think the Muslims have now moved in that manner to Samajwadi that you do it for us now that we have given you the mandate. So, in a sense, part of the miscalculation of Congress or BJP on the one hand and large sections of the media on the other, that all of them would get 80s and 90s and so on, is a misreading of the mood of the electorate in UP, which has clearly since the Mayawati election gone into a bipolar mode, if you like. Yes, and I think it's a misreading and wishful thinking. Yeah. The media wants either the BJP to win or the Congress to win. And neither was going to and happen. And neither was going to happen. And the media wants a two-party system in this country. It doesn't like a federal structure for some reason because of the corporate uh, complexion of the media today. And they don't want to recognize that regional parties have a certain uh, a clout and, ha uh, and do address some of the aspirations which these national parties have lost touch with. And how did you read the Punjab elections? Because there was, again, widespread expectation that Punjab would continue to follow the switching of parties at each election. But that didn't happen this time. The anti-incumbency uh, trend in Punjab didn't seem to uh, weigh with the electorate. I think there are many reasons and one of the reasons of course the Congress itself, the Congress inability to first decide who will be its chief minister candidate. So you had a, a period of the election where Amrinder Singh, their main guy was sulking and then midway into the election they said alright you're going to be the chief minister so he came out to etc. Plus the too many factions, too many individuals are not getting along together. The Akalis were a little cleverer, they realized that they were on a back footing, they realized the people were angry that they haven't fulfilled a lot of pro promises. So they did one thing which was rather interesting, They, for the first time I think this was, that they extended their scope and they got out of this whole panthic uh, framework and gave tickets to about 10 or 11 non-Akali, uh, non-Sikhs. Now that was quite interesting because they're being forced to some levels of an inclusive kind of politics to stay afloat. Right. So I think their strategy worked. Paid dividends, yes. yeah. whereas the Congress had no strategy. Had no strategy. <laughs> right. And the Uttarakhand elections, of course, again there, people again expected that the BJP would lose, partly because of the switching of parties in successive elections and also because of the problems they had in yeah, their the previous end. administration yeah. with the corruption and the misgovernance. Uh, charges. Uh, how do you read the Uttarakhand? Uh? But they did the same thing there, Raghu. They first played around with N.D. Tiwari, who whether you like it or not, whether he's good or bad, he still is a leader and recognized leader, the only leader that the Congress really has over there. First they got tried to marginalize him, then they brought him back in, then they didn't give clear signals to Harish Rawat or this other chap that they have got, Bahugna. So there was this total lot of factions working. It wasn't a united team. You see the and now you can see the play out. Yeah. You know, there's, they've got a chief minister who nobody is supporting in the Congress. So let's see what happens to Uttarakhand, whether the government stays or doesn't stay. But uh, I think this over-reliance on this Nehru Gandhi, you know, this whole dynastic polity where you put all your eggs in one basket, which is Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi and Priyanka Gandhi, is where the Congress feels that we can do whatever we want, we can break ourselves into little bits, but eventually when the family moves, we'll get the votes. And now UP has shown it doesn't happen. Let's take a, an overview of the elections as a whole. Uh, how do you see this impacting on UPA2 going forward? Uh, there's already talk of midterm poll, there's a talk of incipient third fronts and so on. How do you see this unfolding? Well, at the moment, I think this third front is again a media canard to try and, you know, break any such grouping just in case anybody is thinking about it because frankly right now it doesn't exist. Uh, none of the regional parties are in a mood to really think. They all consolidating what they have got and uh, uh, but the problem is coming for the Congress from within the UPA. You have this Mamta Banerjee who suddenly sends blood and since she's a little crazy anyway, a crazy politician, she is uh, now uh, has a field to really air all her characteristics, which is keeping the Congress on its 
uh, feet on very irrelevant and very stupid issues. I mean, right. I could have understood that the issues were important, but they're not. And then you have the Congress trying to make up with uh, the Samajwadi Party, discussing a cabinet berth for Mulayam Singh at the center, uh, trying to <clears throat> make sure that Akhilesh Yadav works along with it. Right now, the Samajwadi Party, to be to understand it, is in the mood to govern. They want money from the center. And so they're not going to rock any boat. They're going to, for at least one and a half years uh, before the elections, they are going to work with the Congress as much as they can. We all know that the electorate in India has now learned to uh, respond differently in state elections and in national elections. The days of looking at the Indian electorate as immature and so on are, I think, long past. Uh, but how do you see the present state assembly elections, which have just taken place, reflecting in the Lok Sabha uh, to come? Do you see this as indicative of a trend for the future in the Lok Sabha? Or do you see the Lok Sabha elections responding differently? Well, I think, you know, the way the voting has happened this time, let's take UP because it's the largest state and you can understand. In two years down the line, unless the Congress really pulls up its socks and gives an entirely different image, the victory of the Samajwadi is going to be reflected in the number of MPs it gets in the Lok Sabha. There is this certain disillusionment with the Congress, which Rahul Gandhi could not break, and Priyanka Gandhi lost eight of the ten seats in Raibareli and Amethi. So clearly all these factors are not working, you know. So, I, and another thing that has to be understood is the way, it is amazing, I've never seen this before, because there was no BJP in UP, right. and there was no fear in the Muslim vote that there would be a BJP. So, everybody was saying that because there's no fear, the Muslim will get divided amongst the Congress, uh, amongst all the parties. It didn't happen. They just, there was like a lightning sort of a message, a grapevine that buzzed through UP, and the whole thing was like a cascade towards uh, the Samajwadi and uh, people say oh Butler House you know that encounter death etc is limited to Azamgarh it's not it does exist all over it does you see everybody is looking at development and progress we all say that but they're looking at development and progress through their own prisms of security right. of empowerment of justice and then development and progress because the voter knows that you can't have development and progress in a vacuum that Rahul Gandhi was trying to create that had no link with his life on the ground. So while the electorate has gone for decisive verdicts, in most cases, barring Uttarakhand, which is marginal, otherwise the electorate has gone one way or the other and voted in a government decisively in the states. Uh, that has not happened at the center for several elections yes. now. Uh, so do you see a mood in the electorate towards some form of decisive verdict in the Lok Sabha? Or do we expect a continuation of the current slightly indecisive mandate? I think it will continue to be hung. Uh, because if you don't say that, then one would be going into that argument which says that the electorate will vote either BJP or Congress. And that's not going to happen it because the electorate has not accepted the two-party system. And because it hasn't, and because the regional parties are regional and not spread all over India, they will get reflected in parliament. So it will remain hung. And we'll still again see coalitions emerging. Now, what kind of coalitions these are will depend, I think, much closer to the election, not right now. Thank you, uh, Seema, for reading the tea leaves. Thanks, Thank Steve. you.